Alright, and we're on the last worksheet of the packet, so if you're struggling, getting a little tired, it's okay. The end is near. Alright, this is the heat transfer worksheet. Alright, uh, and the three types of heat transfer are conduction, which means it's touching. And if that is the correct answer, you'll put CD in the blank. Uh, convection are when a gas or a liquid heat up and then rise and start to move and then they cool off and come back down and cause a convection cycle. So if it's rising air or rising fluid, uh, then that's going to be uh, convection or CV in the blank. And finally, if it travels across through the air or through space to hit something, then that is going to be radiation, moving as a ray or electromagnetic wave and uh, goes through air or space and hits something. So uh, depending on that, on the first hand, they're going to give you an example. For example, number one, hot coffee is stirred with a spoon. The spoon yeah, gets hot due to, well, the spoon is in the coffee, so they are touching, so that would be conduction. All right, so you would put CD in the first blank there. All right. Um, and so forth, okay? And so that's kind of what you're going to do for each of these. Uh, number two, let's just do one more, uh, just uh, for practice. Uh, a chair is placed several feet from a fire in a fireplace. The fireplace has a glass screen. The side of the chair facing the fireplace gets warm because of. So the heat's coming from the fire, hitting the front of the chair. So that would be, spoiler alert, the correct answer is radiation because it's moving through air to get to you and going through the glass for that matter too but it's going through the air getting to you so that is going to be radiation now if you are above the fire just for the record let's think about this say you have a flame fire right here uh, if you're on the side of the fire and the, f the heat is coming to you that would be radiation now if something was dangling up here above which would be okay if you were a marshmallow on a stick and about to be part of a s'more that's all right uh, if it was you yourself not so good but you would be getting heat of two kinds. One, convection, because the air is being heated here and it's rising above there. If you see all the ashes and stuff that get swept up in the air and go dancing up in the sky, those are all being convected. They're moving, the air is moving up, as well as you're getting radiation that's going through the air and hitting it. So uh, when you're cooking something over a fire, you're getting the best of both. You're getting a radiation and convection. But if you're off to the side, it's always going to be uh, radiation. Okay, because convection tends to make things move upward, either air or liquid. Now, number one through five, below that, in the next section is six through 11, and they're really the same kind of thing. In this case, you're trying to, instead of what, it, what kind of heat transfer is an example of, here we're talking about what kind of heat transfer are they trying to prevent or insulate against, okay? Uh, so kind of keep from happening. Uh, so number one, on the second section says as a house is being built special foam is used to fill in the spaces around the windows this is to prevent heat transfer by okay well is it going to move up through the windows well probably not so it's probably not going to be convection all right is it keeping it from touching the windows uh not so much so this would probably be the best one would be radiation now on some of these uh the questions could go maybe either way a little bit, not always clear cut. So if you want to give me a little explanation out beside it or at the end of the sentence, just to kind of back up, uh, then you could probably get good credit for that. Okay, uh, so some may have more than uh, one possible answer. Now let's look at number two. It says a laboratory worker puts on a heavy glove before picking up a hot beaker to prevent heat being transferred to his hand by... Well, he's picking it up, so he's touching it, or the glove is touching it. So he's preventing his hand from touching it, so he's really trying to prevent, spoiler alert, conduction. All right? So he's keeping it from touching his hand. Therefore, same thing would be if you use an oven mitt to get something out of the uh, 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 oven or to grab a handle of a, a pot or a cast iron skillet or something like that. Uh, and so forth. Okay. Um, so that's through number 11. Now, the next section on the back of the page where it just has identify the direction of heat flow in each of these cases, and then it has A through I. All right. Uh, on these, we'll just do the first, first example. 
let me draw it. Drawing may help you think about it. Uh, so say we have a glass of water and just tap water out of there and we put some ice cubes in it. Okay, now you don't have to draw the picture, but we're just looking at the, uh, looking at the picture to figure it out. Well, we know it's going to go from hotter to colder. Okay, and so we know that the water is hotter or colder than the ice. Since the water's a, uh, just out of the tap, it's probably going to be of, obviously above freezing or it wouldn't have come out of the tap, tap. So it's going to be warmer and the heat is going to flow from the water into the ice. Now, when you think of it in this terms, you could also think, well, the air, the air is probably going to be, assuming this is inside, since it's, we did it out of a tap, then it's probably going to be warmer also. So heat from the air is also going to be going into the water. However, since there are fewer air molecules and this is happening mostly by conduction there's a lot more conduction happening around the ice cubes because you can see where um, they're in contact whereas only a few of these air molecules are going to hit it but there would be some uh, probably should have smaller arrows because there's not going to be as much but there there would be some from there so if you're going to write this down the key thing would be it's going from the water into the ice but it could also be going from the air into the ice and as the water cools down some of it's going to go from the air into the water if you let this sit eventually eventually all the water would melt and the water and the ice would melt the water and the air would eventually equalize at the same temperature okay so that's the kind of thing i want you to do just you could just write the word part like this um, where is the um, heat going to go okay and show which way it's going, where the heat's going from what into what. Okay, um, the last section is specific heats. It gives you a list of different uh, substances, and it tells you what their specific heat is in calories per gram degree Celsius. Uh, just for the record, notice none of these involve calculations. This is not a plug into a formula or whatever. Okay, but just using the information about their specific heats, remembering if it's a high or low specific heat, it will heat up quickly or slower than one with a low specific heat. Uh, think about that. And you should be able, based on what it says happens, tell me which of those two substances will either, like on a, number one, heat up first, or which one is zinc or aluminum, based on how quickly they heat up or don't heat up. All right. And that's basically it. Until next week. All right. And next Thursday, we'll go for round two. Hopefully, this has all been well. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me by email. All right. If, if you feel frustrated, you can scream, but I probably won't hear that. So I would recommend using the email if you want to get in touch with me. All right. Hope, hope everything goes well. Good luck. And I'll hear from you, I guess.